Welcome to this screencast. My name is Paul Endras and I'm a consultant and solution architect for integration services like SQL Server and BizTalk Server for many years. In this video, I will show you the infrastructure layout of a BizTalk Server 2016 environment with a new high availability feature, always on availability groups in SQL Server 2016. BizTalk Server 2016 provides a new feature for high availability and disaster recovery in conjunction with SQL Server 2016. Basically, the BizTalk server relies heavily on the database transactions for processing and storing business data. One or more instances of the SQL server is needed to handle all that data persistency. Since SQL server itself is based on distributed transactional processing, the data consistency is guaranteed even in the case of failure. Especially in enterprise scale, real-time scenarios like B2B or B2C, there is a need for high availability. Hence, the requirement is to avoid the cost of losing business transactions and valuable business data. This becomes a crucial point for any business. In this video, I will cover the following topics. After this introduction, I will list some of the benefits of using always-on availability groups with BizTalk Server and mention some of the real-world scenarios. The next step will briefly look at some of the most common high availability options for BizTalk Server. And then we step into the demo, which covers the prerequisites as well as the infrastructure in detail. Here we go. So, what are the benefits of using always-on availability groups in SQL Server 2016 together with BizTalk Server 2016? Here are some of the most relevant aspects about always-on availability groups and why you should use them together with BizTalk Server 2016. First, the business data as well as the processing data is kept redundant. This behavior takes place in real time, with nearly no cost at the level of the database. Second, the Windows failover cluster can host the SQL Server database instances and provide automatic failover in case of failures. Third, since data is kept redundant, multiple instances of the database are hosted and can be used also for read-only purposes like database backup and reporting. The real-world scenarios provide plenty of reasons why failure could happen. Therefore, we can distinguish, first, planned scenarios like maintenance work, or second, unplanned scenarios like power failure. The failure might affect different levels within the operational stack. First, the service layer. Second, the infrastructure layer, like network or storage devices. And third, the data layer. There are several options for high availability within the BizTalk Server 2016 environment. With the Windows Server 2016 platform, we can make use of the failover clustering feature right out of the box. The concept of the failover cluster in Windows Server dates back to the days of Windows NT 3.5. Since then, the Windows failover cluster made tremendous improvements and now supports newer concepts like SQL Server Always On Availability Groups that we will discuss today. The failover cluster feature in Windows Server 2016 covers both levels, the service layer as well as the data layer. The classic failover cluster for application servers like SQL Server, SharePoint Server or BizTalk Server uses failover clustering on the service level. A common usage scenario is an active-passive cluster. This offers the service redundancy on all cluster nodes, where only one is serving while the others are in spare and one gets active only when the active node is considered to be unavailable. There are other options and nuances that we will not cover here in detail. The Windows Failover cluster provides additional cluster roles for the infrastructure layer like network components, DHCP, DNS, DTC, as well as other devices within your enterprise network like typical storage for file shares or archives. The concept of clustering the infrastructure layer covers both the unplanned and the planned kind of failures. In the following demo, I will focus on handling the risks of failures on the data layer. For this purpose, the Windows failover cluster is used to provide a cluster role and cluster resources for the SQL always on availability groups. The concept of clustering the data layer covers both the unplanned and planned kind of failures. The aim here is to run the BizTalk server environment with all of its applications regardless of failures on the data layer. The uptime of the whole middleware layer 
has to be guaranteed. Let's have a closer look at the infrastructure layout for the given scenario. Here is the big picture that summarizes the server landscape. From the bottom to the top you can see the Active Directory service domain server with DNS, the cluster shared disks with the quorum disks, the layer with the SQL Server cluster nodes. Each node has several instances installed for the BizTalk databases and the BizTalk server itself. I will go into the details for each and every functional server in a minute, but before I would like to summarize the prerequisites briefly. In the given scenario, the Windows server was set up with all the roles and features needed. I was using Windows Nano Server together with some PowerShell scripts to quickly set up the cluster server. For the SQL Server instances, an unattended setup with a configuration file might do a good job as well. This way you have full control over the automatic creation and can reproduce the results as needed. I'm not going into the details about setting up the Windows failover cluster here, as we will be focusing more on the always-on availability groups in SQL Server together with Bistock Server. Here you can see the infrastructure as a whole with all the servers included. The foundation of this infrastructure is the domain controller which is hosting the Active Directory. You can also see the different kind of accounts, for example for the users, the groups and the computers in this domain. An organization unit includes all the BizTalk server accounts. This server provides also the DNS role. As you can see, the DNS lists all the domain and network resources needed for the cluster. The cluster service as well as the cluster automatic update service. Keep in mind, the SQL listeners for always on availability groups are also listed in here in the DNS. This is the file server, which provides the virtual iSCSI disks. These disks are needed for the SQL instances and also for the cluster quorum disk. In this scenario, the failover cluster consists of three cluster nodes in SQL Server. In general, the minimum number is two nodes for always on availability groups in SQL Server 2016, and the maximum is nine nodes that is one primary and up to eight secondary as database replicas. Each of the BizTalk core databases needs its own instance. First, single sign-on database. Second, the message box database. Third, the management database. And fourth, the tracking database. In this example, we have four databases multiplied by three nodes, that is 12 instances altogether. Here you can see an instance for single sign-on database in the availability group together with its replicas from the other instances. Let's have a look at the cluster server. Here you can see the cluster nodes together with its shared disks as I mentioned before. Here you can see the cluster roles and its resources, especially the SQL listeners. Now let's have a look at the cluster when it fails over with a manual switch to another cluster node. I will show this. Finally, let's have a look at the BizTalk server. Here you can see the BizTalk server group configured for the management database pointing to the SQL listener. You can also see the configuration for the BizTalk server runtime with all the service accounts together 
with the service groups. The configuration for single sign-on points also to our SQL listener. At the end of this video, I show you the actual settings for the Bistock server group. The Bistock server group is configured to use the SQL listeners instead of the instance names. The Bistock server group consists of multiple hosts and is now configured for high availability with always on availability groups. In this video tutorial, I showed you a full-fledged infrastructure layout for a Bistock Server 2016 environment using the Always On Availability Groups feature in SQL Server 2016. I mentioned the options for the Bistock Server High Availability, the benefits of using Always On Availability Groups, the prerequisites and the involved servers in the cluster solution. In the next video tutorial, I will show you the Always On Availability Groups SQL Server 2016 in detail, including the most significant configuration settings. If you like this video, click the like button below. If you want to see more of my videos in the future, click also the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.